Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. It is inerrant, infallible, incorruptible. Today, I will be taught the word of God that will go into the soul of my heart and produce not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. I decree my mind is attentive. My heart is receptive. I shall, I must, I will be changed in Jesus' name. Y'all want to be in sin. He said whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Right? Faith pleases God. So how many want to please God? Well, we please God by staying in faith. Because we, we, you know, we, we can preach a whole lot of stuff. And I mean, I, I preach from A to Z. But at the end of the day, you need to hear faith. Because the just shall live not by speaking in tongue, by faith. And you need to be spending every awakened moment of your life trying to develop your faith so you can produce the things that God desires for you to produce. Say a faith life. Go over to Hebrews chapter 3. This is powerful right here. Hebrews chapter 3. Drop down to the 12th verse. You there? All right. He says, take care, brethren, talking to the church again, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. He said, an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Now, unbelief here is caused by a hardened heart, which is caused by deceitfulness of sin. The result is apostasy or, or moving away from God and departing from the living God. So he's saying that the heart can become evil and operating in unbelief. So when you see a person that is getting off into unbelief, it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. I'm going to read that one more time. He says, take care, brethren, that there be not in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. So the, the fallout or the apostasy, it starts in the evil heart. But he didn't just say evil. He said an evil and unbelieving heart. So that lets us know that when, when a person is operating in that unbelief to that level, the heart can become evil. Evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. So an evil, unbelieving heart will draw me away from God. Because you see people, you'll be like, how they just leave God like that? How they just walk away from God? Well, there was an evil, unbelieving heart that caused them to apostatize or to, to, to depart from the faith. This is what happened to the children of Israel. He, he was really talking about the children of Israel, but he was, he was telling the church, don't let this happen to you. Don't develop an evil and unbelieving heart that causes you to walk away from God. Because you don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to walk away from God. Something starts in your heart. Unbelief and evil. See, if I, if, I, if I don't believe God is who he say he is, then I'll let evil get in. I'll start doing so. I'll start plotting. You know what I'm saying? I'll start plotting and being evil. Why? Why am I doing that? Because I don't believe anymore. And the person that doesn't believe anymore is a dangerous person. Because they, they are angry at God and anybody that God is in. People don't just say, I'm mad at you, God. No, they're mad at God and God's children. 
And that is because of an evil, unbelieving heart. And he is telling us to guard against that. But let's look at something real interesting. Go to chapter 4 of Hebrews. And we're going to read the first three verses, then we're going to drop down. Are y'all over there? Therefore, let us fear, that word fear is reverence, let us reverence if while a promise remains of entering his rest. Now, let me, let me slow down a little bit. Rest is not talking about when you get to heaven. God promised Israel that he was going to bring them into his rest, but they didn't make it into his rest. So rest is a place in God. We'll come back and define that. Um, of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short. Don't come up short of entering his rest. Verse number two, for indeed we have had the gospel or the good news preached to us just as they also. But listen, people are like, well, we just got the gospel. No, they had the gospel too. They didn't have the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, but they had the gospel, the good news. That's what gospel means, good news. So just like, you, you know, they had the good news preached to them, we had good news preached to us, right? Just as also, but the word they heard did not profit them because it was not unified or mixed with faith or by faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. The rest was created before the people were created. But, but what I love, it says that the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word that was preached to them did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. So it does not matter what you hear. It does not matter what you read. If you do not mix it with faith, it will not profit you. They had good news preached to them just like we have good news preached to us, but it did not profit the children of Israel because it was not mixed with faith. So it's not what we hear, it's how we hear it. Because we can be hearing a great word, but lack the faith that is necessary to cause that word to come to pass in our lives. So we don't want to just fill up notebooks. We want to make sure that we have faith to manifest what we're hearing. That's it. That's it. Amen. it did not profit them. How many people sit up in churches all around the world every week and hear the good news, but it does not profit them because it's not mixed with faith? It's not God's desire that we just hear a bunch of stuff. It's God's desire that there be application, that we can take what we hear, what we read off the pages and manifest it, walk it out, in our lives. Yes. You know, you got to be careful with terminology now because you know the, the new age is still in our terms. They got this manifest stuff. I'm like, dude, don't be stealing stuff in the Bible and trying to make it yours. When we talk about manifest, we're talking about manifesting the word. But I can't manifest the word in my life if I don't have faith. I'll be like the children of Israel. I'll hear the good news, but it won't profit or benefit me because there's no faith to bring it to pass. Hearing is just not enough. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not just enough to hear it. You got to have faith. I'm telling y'all, when I learned this, it changed my life. It changed everything when I really got a hold of the principles of the word of God and really began to learn how faith works in the life of a believer, I stopped letting trials knock me off of my posts. I stopped letting bad days determine how my spirit was going to respond. 
I realize none of that moves me that I live by faith. I'm not moved by what I see. I've heard bad doctor reports and stayed in faith and went back and the, the report has shifted. Three, three bouts with cancer. Three. And the Lord brought you through all of them. So don't tell me that the word of God is not true and God will not manifest in your life what you have faith for. It didn't profit them because it was not mixed with what? Faith. Faith. See, it's not, it's not enough. See, a lot, in, in my heart is to, to see people walk out God's word and his will for their life. That's my heart. It's my heart to see people educated in the word of God and stop believing this hype stuff and these lies. People that don't know the Bible just throwing out a bunch of stuff and people grabbing hold of it like it's the word of God. It's, it's, it's my heart to see people not walk in ignorance. That's my heart. That's why I teach the way I teach because I want you to understand it. But more than understanding, I want you to walk it out. I want this to be a reality in your life. Don't just leave here saying, man, that was a good word. Walk the greatest gift you can give your leader is, is manifest what they're teaching you. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't know how it breaks a, a leader heart to stand up behind the sacred desk, teach the word of God week in and week out, and then people not rise to that level and start walking in the word that they're teaching. The greatest gift is to live it out. Grab hold of it and let it manifest in your life. That's the greatest gift. Go down to verse 11. Verse 11 says, Therefore let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through the following same example of disobedience. Now, I think the, the King James says through the pattern of disobedience. Let me switch my translation one second. And, okay, this is the new King James. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. They had an example, but it wasn't a good example. It was an example of disobedience. One translation say the pattern, to real life say the pattern of unbelief or disobedience. Disobedience. See, they use unbelief and disbelief, unbelief and, and disobedience interchangeably. But it means disobedience in this context means unbelief. So there is a pattern of unbelief. Pattern is like it happens the same way. Right? So he, he is warning the church not to fall into the pattern of unbelief. Meaning that you fall into this thing and that becomes the pattern of your life. You just operating in unbelief all the time. Nothing never manifests, it produces in your life because you're in a pattern of unbelief. He's saying, don't be like them. We got to have faith. And see, we quote this next scripture. I wasn't going to read it, but it just, it just hit me. Verse 12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So he is letting us know that don't fall into a pattern of unbelief because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Don't fall in unbelief because the word will produce what it says it's going to produce. Don't let these promises that's preached to you end up like it did to them because it was not mixed with faith. Faith, anything that we need in the realm of the spirit is going to come by faith. Faith comes 
by hearing. It comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. So we produce by faith. We said faith is a bridge and it is a currency. It has the ability to produce everything that God promised it would. Right? So faith is always coming. But guess what? So is doubt. That's why 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that will exalt itself above the knowledge of God. There is a battle going on between the knowledge of God and these images that the devil and life wants to put in your mind is competing with the word of God. Which one is going to win? Which one you feed the most? I heard um, Pastor Marlon Gould say this um, um, this week. She said there was a time in her life where she was battling images. And she said, God, give me another image. <laughs> oh, y'all missing that. <laughs> and God gave her another image. And she focused on the image God gave her instead of the image that the devil was trying to plant. If you're having issues with images, say, God, give me another image. So there's a battle going on with images because whatever image you entertain is going to determine if you're in unbelief or you're in faith. Y'all remember when uh, Laban was ripping Jacob, his nephew, off? He was changing his wages and gave him Leah first and then he had to work another seven years to get Rachel. And so he out there in the field and he's, he's taking care of his livestock. And then the Lord gives him a revelation. There, there's a revelation for everything. Revelation to change your life. So he made a deal with Laban. He said, okay, all the solid uh, livestock you can have. Give me the spot and the speckle. Well, it wasn't any spot or in speckle holly being born. So Laban like, oh yeah, that's a good deal. But they didn't realize that Jacob had heard from God. And so Jacob got a stick and, and cut pieces out of it to put spots in the stick. And then he put it in the watering troughs. So when the animals came to drink, they made it at the watering trough. So they were looking at a spotted image when they made it. And so all of these animals start having babies that were spotted and speckled. And Laban scratching his head like, hold up, how is this possible? Well, it was a revelation. Yes. They, see, Jacob had to change the image. Yeah. I hear that, I hear that, Lord. Water represents the word. It, 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 it represents the word, but he didn't just leave it as the word. He put the manifestation of what he wanted the word to produce in the word. What are you seeing when you look into the word? He wanted to see spotted and speckled. So he put that image in the word. So when the animals came to drink, they made it at, at, the, at the drinking troughs and they produced what they were looking at. What are you looking at when you're trying to conceive? Because what you're looking at when you're trying to conceive will be what you bring forth. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, sir. You keep looking at broke, you're going to be broke. You keep looking at sick, you're going to be sick. You keep looking at confusion, you're going to have confusion. But if you see in the word that the promises of God are yes and amen, then you will have the manifestation of that. Faith without works, corresponding action is dead. Man, I got the move. That word rest in the Greek is kataposis, K-A-T-A-P-A-U-S-I-S, K-A-T-A-P-A-U-S-I-S. And it means abode, it means rest, a putting to rest, Calming of the winds, a resting place. So when he's talking about entering into his rest, he is talking about the calming of the winds. 
where the winds will become calm and you will be in a storm, but the storm will not be in you. And what used to keep you up at night, now you'll be able to rest in it. Because you have, you have entered into his rest. I don't know about you, but there's been many times in my life where I needed the, the storm to be calm. Because it seemed like that the storm was getting the best of me. Just like when the apostles was on the boat and it seemed like the storm was getting the best and, and they woke Jesus up. See, anytime Jesus is asleep, you should be too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing people up with this one. The reason why you waking up because you don't believe that Jesus is in your boat. <laughs> It may seem like I'm surrounded, <laughs> but I'm surrounded. Now, Jesus is in the boat getting some rest, and they're going to go wake up Jesus. They're going to wake the word up. Oh, my God. They're going to go disturb the word instead of speaking the word. Because the same power that was in the boat was in them. Every time they mess with Jesus, he rebuked them. <laughs> you a little faith. Y'all ain't got no faith. I'm doing all these miracles and y'all scared of a storm. Waking me up. I need to re regenerate. <laughs> and Jesus got to come back up there to the boat, top of, and it's peace, be still. Speak to the storm and the waves. Tell the storm peace and the waves be still. And it became calm. The thing is, they could have did the same thing. Unbelief. He kept rebuking them. He had to get that, that unbelief out of them before he left. Oh, yeah, a little faith. How is it that you have no faith? They could have did the same thing. That's what we do. We run into somebody else that we feel is superior. The same word supposed to be in you. Same word. Now, I understand sometimes we do have to get, get some agreement and stuff. I, I'm not saying that. But we'll do that before we even speak. Have you spoke to it? No, I just need some prayer. You know what you want to tell people like that? Leave me alone. Don't mess with me. You haven't even spoken. I'm trying to think. Go over to Mark chapter 9. That concluded uh, the limiting power of unbelief. Tonight, we're probably just going to get to introduce this right here. Uh, getting to the root of the cause. Getting to the root. I mean, no, if you don't get to the root of it, nothing is going to happen. Now, I'm going to paraphrase, because I, I can't read all of this, but let me see what I want to jump in. Okay, let, let me just paraphrase, and we'll jump in at 23, but I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the Word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www.wordlifecenter.org. Or you may also send a seed offering to Post Office Box 293, Kannapolis, North Carolina 28082. The Word of God says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting World Life Center International. Hello, I'm Apostle Jeff Sanders of World Life Center International, and I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. 
If you haven't made this decision, I promise it's the best decision that you've ever made. And I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. It's real simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, and on the third day you got up with all power in your hand. I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. And Father, I vow to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Now you need to take the next step, get connected to a Bible teaching church. Uh, wherever your area is, find a church that teaches the uncompromised word of God. If you're anywhere within driving distance of Word Life Center International, we would love to have you right here at 1124 Rosewood Avenue. And if you need to reach out for prayer or anything, the information is on the screen. Let us know that you received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. We don't have any way of knowing how to pray for you or that you made this decision if you don't reach out to us. So I encourage you to do that today. And until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get out. That's a legitimate question. Now, let me, let me, let me get your translations right. Because King James, even the modern English translation, some of them got it wrong. And so we have built uh, Sister Tracy, whole doctrines on fasting and praying. I had an older mother tell me, um, she said, I had an encounter with a demon one time, and she was like, I couldn't get that devil out. She said, I said, I ain't been fasting and praying enough. Now, let, um, we're going to answer that. Let me ask you a question. When he sent them out two by two and they was casting out demons, were they fasting? We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.